The dark forces have been practicing their subtle tyranny for millions of years, but they have been especially successful since newspapers became commonplace. Newspaper editors and reporters readily respond to the lowest of human vibrations, for their business is the reporting of crime, war, and trouble of any sort. Good news is no news to a reporter. Their gullibility is the same today in, that, in their attitude towards spaceships as it was in 1873 when a Boston newspaper published the following piece under the sensational title, Beware the Inventor. A man about 46 years of age given the name of Joshua Coppersmith has been arrested in New York for attempting to extort, extort funds from ignorant and superstitious people by exhibiting a device which he says will convey the human voice any distance over metallic wires so that it will be heard by the listener at the other end. He calls the instrument a telephone which is obviously intended to in imitate the word telegraph and win the confidence of those who know of the success of the latter instrument without understanding the principle on which it is based. Well-informed people know that it is impossible to transmit the human voice over wires as may be done with dots and dashes and signals of the Morse code, and that were it possible to do so, the thing would be of no practical value. The authorities who have apprehended this criminal are to be congratulated, and it is to be hoped that his punishment will be prompt and fitting, that it may serve as an example to other conscientious schemers who enrich themselves at the expense of their fellow creatures. That was the radio announcement, <laughs> or newspaper announcement. It was thought at one time that Mr. Matthews might bring the Tesla set for interplanetary communications to New York and other cities and demonstrate it. But the space people informed him that such a demonstration would be useless at the present time. The doubters would still doubt, and even if they saw the machine and heard the messages, they would still insist it was a trick of some sort. Apparently, there has not been much progress in these parts since the days of Joshua Coppersmith. But there is another difficulty connected with bringing the Tesla set to New York. The set works on a very fine beam, finer than a hair, according to Tesla. The spaceships flying at altitudes up to 25,000 miles have worked out calculations whereby they can beam their signals to the set, which is always in an exact location. The signal is not received if the set is moved even a few inches. Therefore, if the set is to operate in another city, it would be necessary to make prior arrangements with the space people, such as Mr. Matthews makes on his summer trips. Furthermore, the space people do not warn Mr. Matthews when they wish to send their signals. He has rigged up an alarm on the set which rings if the spaceship is ready to send a message. If he is somewhere near the set, he hears the alarm and answers. It can readily be seen that the operation of the set is entirely in the hands of the space people. They have requested Mr. Matthews not to give out information on the construction of the set at this time. The reason is that this type of willing service only encourages laziness among engineers and scientists who are quite capable of building a set if they would apply themselves and as Mr. Matthews advocates, if they would attune their minds to, to God, as Tesla did. Mr. Matthews has explained one basic idea which is not clear in the minds of the average person today. He emphasizes the fact that every radio and television set is a Tesla set. Therefore, an individual cannot have a clear understanding of electronics unless he has a clear understanding of Tesla's basic principles. Mr. Matthews goes on to say that no one apart from Tesla has ever made anything new in the way of a radio or television set except for changes in design. The circuits, coils, condensers, and all important parts are all part of Tesla's basic discovery. So regardless of brand names, every set must be a Tesla set. However, the set for interplanetary communication is different both in the manner in which it operates and because it is especially designed to receive signals from space. It is impossible to send ordinary radio waves through the upper layers above the Earth. All such signals will bounce back to Earth, as is well known to radio hams. Tesla knew this more than 50 years ago. He also knew 
that the space people would try to get in touch with us from their ships. So he devised this special machine which will receive their signals. Now, due to the fact that the, de the design was given to me by Tesla in confidence and in trust, to be used for the convenience of the space people when they approach the earth, I could not pass on this information to others without permission. The crew aboard the first spaceship that landed on my property told me not to give out the information yet, which meant, means that it can be made available at some time. This is Mr. Uh, Matthew speaking. Meanwhile, the full directives for building the set can be found in the lectures which Tesla gave between the years 1890 and 1896 and also in some other lectures which he gave in recent years. What the space people desire is that someone in the United States discover the secret contained in the lectures, build a set, and then give full credit to Tesla. The dull Russians are rapidly discovering the lost secrets of Tesla as they have demonstrated by producing the powerless aircraft Tesla invented for the United States at the close of World War I. But the Russians are giving Tesla full credit for the design. I do not know what Russia intends to do with the craft. Of course, the ship can carry the extra weight of bombs and so forth because there is no limit to the ground power plant. So it can be pow powered far beyond the ordinary plane. Besides, the motor in the plane does not require any direct connection or fuel, so the craft is relieved of that weight. This machine was also reported in Tesla's old lectures, or at least the motor was described. The ideal can also be adapted by both land and sea transportation. More than 20 years ago, I suggested that it be used to power our trains, and I wrote a paper for the magazine Railway Electrical Engineer, but nothing came of it. You see how small are the minds of the so-called experts. Here is all the, this information lying about wide open to the public, and yet the big wigs have to spend their time having fun with their space rockets. A number of these experts in both the United States and Canada have been trying to pump me for free information. They are too lazy and too dull to grasp Tesla's principles, so they want me to do all the brain work for them. But meanwhile, the Russians are doing their own brain work, giving all due credit to Tesla and coming up with his discoveries applied to industry. The point is that Americans have never used the information that Tesla gave them so freely, and now they are trying to pump me for more probably with a view to robbing Tesla even further and making a few millions for themselves. Nor does the pumping stop here. I have received letters from all over the world, but they just do not have the right kind of bait to catch this fish. Money does not interest me, as it did not interest Tesla. Tesla was my lifelong friend and teacher. All I know concerning electrical engineering came from this wonderful man. He has always had first place in my thoughts, second only to God. And because of my faith in him, all of my information concerning his discoveries and inventions is firsthand. Many of his inventions, to my knowledge, have never been made public, and much of the confidential data which he gave me is not otherwise available. But until and unless these great experts who are riding herd over us today use the information which Tesla has made public and give him full credit for it, it is useless to give them more. For instance, some American bigwig who read some excerpts from your book, Return of the Doll, Dove, <laughs> Return of the Dove, wrote me a couple of letters. He seemed to be afraid that you, Mrs. Storm, would not do Tesla full and proper justice. On the other hand, he was looking for all the free information he thought he could pry out of me. You had not given him my address, so he had gone to the trouble to work through a stoo stooge in Glen Falls and to try to get a line on me through my friends in New York. Finally, he traced me by way of my letters going into the United States to you. He said he had heard of my father and that Tesla had recorded mention of him, but there is a great deal these people do not know. For why should Tesla have confided in people who went out of their way to rob and cheat him? Not one of his so-called friends went out of their way to help him when help was most needed. But now, oh, now, since these very, very great friends of Tesla have heard of your wonderful work and of the return of the dove, they are trying to get into the, into, into the limelight and pretend that they have been there all the time. And this continues on in the next one, this Matthew's conversation.